Hey everyone, and welcome to The Phillips Show. Grab your coffee, it's an awesome day. Listen, the show today really goes to the heart of a lot of our whys. And I was online earlier <clears throat> and reading some of the things that people are talking about. There's all of these, um, they could be bills, it could be opinions, it could be suggestions, it could be recommendations of what do we do and what do we do with people that are different from us? My thing is, I don't think that there's a connectivity between people and these subjects. A lot of times people really don't have an idea of how to either empathize or understand because the two worlds can be completely different unless you know someone. Well, listen, I have somebody on the show today, an independent filmmaker. Her name's Catherine Zimmerman. So accomplished, but she is taking on this project called Iden to bring to the forefront some amazing personality. Hi, Philip. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Really well, good. Good, good, good. I'm here with this big sweater on. It's warm outside. I'm super excited about that. <laughs> so, a, little, a little weird for this time of year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, um, it really is. So before we jump into what you're working on now, I wanted to start with your, with your background. You are, um, you're a filmmaker and you've been a filmmaker for decades. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think it's about year 48 or 49. I'm losing track a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, I started in Dayton, Ohio, as the first female news photographer. Mm. Um, and that was in 1975. I was straight out of college. And in fact, I had a degree in, in uh, still photography. And I remember sitting thinking, what am I going to do with this degree? And the phone literally rang and it was the television station. And it just so happened in the mid seventies, there weren't any women really in broadcasting mm -hmm. and the FCC was cracking down. And so they were scrambling around to find a woman who knew what an F-stop was. Uh, yeah. And so that was me. And I went to, to work at channel two and uh, I got the biggest camera they had. And I think the guys delighted in me having to, carry this thing around it it was so big it, it had a, a body brace and it sit on your shoulder and it was actually okay because i had hands free i could eat a burger if i wanted to but getting it off and getting sitting down it was a really a hard thing to do I, unfortunately i got out of that soon <laughs> yeah it sounds it sounds really big <laughs> so so what is your what is your passion a lot of times people will be um, they'll, they'll have interests in arts and, you know, you're doing, um, filmmaking, directing, and where does your passion lie as a filmmaker? I think, um, I grew up with a really interesting, uh, family. My dad was a farmer. My mom was, uh, actually nearly had her doctorate before she had to stop school. So there was a real big difference in terms of what their education level was, but, uh, mom was really into the arts. And so I got that from mom, just mm -hmm. the imagery, thinking about images, how to capture images. Uh, dad was a great storyteller and I got storytelling from dad. And, and I think I've just combined those two things and made a career out of it. Uh, and I love telling a story. Um, so visually, it's even better to tell it with the pictures and good writing mm -hmm. and just good subjects. So I think I really got that from early on. I was always out taking pictures and, and doing things. And I remember at one point, uh, my mother let, wanted to me to paint and I didn't want to do that. And I realized just recently, I think the reason I didn't want to is because I really wanted to be capturing things in the moment. Mm -hmm. And for me, sitting and painting wasn't that. And I guess I had a more immediate uh, idea about what I wanted to do. But I think that's where it springs from. And I've just always loved 
putting stories together. And I've been really fortunate um, to, I moved to Washington DC area uh, in the year Aiden was born, the subject of my film, uh, was the same year I moved to Washington. And so I really didn't, I only moved back about seven years ago. So I missed the whole chapter in a large part of my family's lives. Uh, but when I went to Washington, I continued in news for about five years. And then I, I always thought that people who were independent or freelance couldn't get a job. And then I realized they get the best jobs. Mm -hmm. And I freelance in 84. And it enabled me to really work on uh, my skills in lighting and, and uh, mm -hmm. telling stories because when you work in news, you, you're just running all over the place. There's not a lot of opportunity to do some quality. So now I'm working on long form pieces. It might take a week, it might take a month, we travel, it's interesting. And so I've been really, really fortunate to be able to go places and, and meet people. And I feel like I have met um, really uh, famous people, but some of the best stories are not really those stories. They are stories about people who are just everyday uh, uh, folks. And, and so I, I've had a nice mix of seeing those two worlds or a couple of worlds anyway. Yeah. And you decided to present a world to the world. <laughs> so you're working on this project, Iden, and for you, I know there is a family connection and a personal story there too. Without me explaining it, I want you to explain it. What is this project that you're working on? Well, as I said, I moved back here in 2017, and uh, Iden is my uh, niece. Uh, she came out as uh, transgender in 2020. Um, Aiden is, uh, presented as a very manly man for 42 years. Um, in fact, I had just a couple months before she came out, I just happened to run into her at the hospital. I was there with someone who was having a procedure and I thought, wow, Aiden could become a action figure, uh, cause she looked so good in her uniform and all that. And then it was, uh, a shock a couple months later when she came out as a, a trans female. And I uh, think that everybody was kind of taken back because no one had any, any inkling at all. Mm -hmm. Iden was always very quiet to herself, very controlled. Um, when I go out and I speak to audiences, when I go out and do speaking engagements or film screenings, um, I always am struck by the fact that people just really don't know a lot of things. We just don't, in fact, even know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And I realized when Aiden came out that what I didn't know, I didn't know was anything about uh, what it was to be transgender. And it was sort of a personal challenge to me. I approached Aiden. Um, we'd had a really good conversation and I, uh, about, I was saying, I always wanted another niece. And yeah. she's like, well, you got one. And anyway, so I asked her after that conversation, if she would be, would consider uh, letting me follow her through transition. Um, and she agreed. And so I started filming in the fall of 2020. And this is right at, in the middle of the pandemic. Mm. Um, Aiden, uh, to just describe Aiden, uh, she is uh, married, three children, uh, biracial, firefighter, paramedic, uh, and transgender. And, and she didn't come out until she was 20, 42. So that's a, that's a big, huge leap when you spent your life presenting as a man. Mm -hmm. um, so so this was is just interesting because it, it's just been the most inter interesting, maybe compelling story I've actually been able to do. Uh, very intimate. Uh, when you follow, when you're doing a document, this is a documentary, and when you're doing a documentary, there's no script. It's just you follow the person. You try to find the truth. You uh, you go where they go, mm -hmm. um, and and in this case. 
we've gone a lot of places. There's been dark places. There's been a lot of joy. And um, I, I feel very close to, to Iden and her family at this point. She, her three kids are fabulous, smart. Um, in the beginning, of course, like kids, if you had a camera, they would look at you and like always looking, right? Yeah. So now, I mean, I tend to go over there and I just open the door and start filming and and they don't even look at me anymore. I'm, oh yeah, hi, or they give me a hug, but they don't have any problem with me uh, just being there like a fly on the wall. So, mm. <laughs> so very comfortable. It's, it's, they're very comfortable. They're very um, at ease with everything that's going on in their life. They have great parents. So it, it's it's been a pleasure to to tell this story and um, and we're I'm still telling it. I'm, I mean I'm still doing some pickup shots. I'm really in the edit phase at this point. Uh, mm. and when you when you're going through the footage and all the interviews, then you realize what footage you do not have. Um, the way this because there's no script, the, the story is really told through Iden's voice, people around her. Uh, possibly an expert who might explain uh, gender dysphoria. Uh, so there's there that's the way it goes. It's just And then my job is to weave all that together. And that's mm -hmm. where I am right now. I'm in the, the weaving process. And, in the weaving? <laughs> and, and, the, and the chopping. There's always chopping. Uh, yeah. I had a good friend who's a filmmaker, and I was telling her what all I was going to be in the film. And she said, well, when you're done, give it to me so I can cut your four hour movie down to, you know, an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's the way it goes. Sometimes when it is very personal, you, you have a hard time cutting things, but it, you also become a lot more efficient with language and, and you realize, well, I really just said that. I don't need to say that again. Let's just take the best uh, bite or sound bite that I have from that person and um, go with it. Uh, so that's a good point. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. You mentioned um, that you're in the editing process, and I can't imagine in documentaries um, how to know what to capture, what to save, what to edit out, what to leave. I mean, you talked about something being repetitious, but it's like, well, what 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 is important, and did I miss something that's important? How do you know while you're in the editing process now? How do you know when the documentary is complete? Well, that, that's a good question because you really have. It's hard when you're, especially this story, because so much has happened in the three years. Um, so you kind of are looking for a place where you feel this person you've been following has come to their own realization, their own identity. Um, when are they comfortable in their skin? Um, and I, I would think I would have the end at some point, and then I'd realize, no, that's not the end. And mm -hmm. I finally found the the end came to me last fall when I was shooting Aiden uh, doing a Petru uh in Dayton, Ohio. And she has gone from a person who didn't communicate except for maybe in a joking way or, you know, working at the firehouse the way those folks, you know, communicate and they're always joking around. Um, she wasn't close. She didn't seem to have a lot of fun. Uh, now she's standing in front of 300 people mm -hmm. to do a presentation as comfortable as can be. And she, she's gone through a lot to find herself. And I, uh, I had one of those, I don't want to get choked up, but I uh, had one of those, I was doing an interview with her and I had this one of those anti moments where mm -hmm. I just looked at her and I thought, I don't even see the old you anymore. I, I just see you and, and I admire you very, very, very much. Mm. Yeah. Much to be admired. 
I, I, I can't even imagine doing a documentary specific on somebody that I know. Um, that would be so that would be so difficult. Um, with with the project, what is something? Because I know people are going to get a lot out of it. What is one thing um, that you want people to walk away from this film with? I think, and, and I know something a, a little bit about this because as a uh, the only female photographer for years and years, there still aren't that many. You're the other. You're that other person that's not supposed to be here. You don't belong in this situation. And so in that way, I can really identify with uh, Iden's journey because what we tend to do as a society is just put people in buckets. We can be a man or a woman. Uh, until trans came along, there was no, I'm, I can identify as a trans person. I don't have to be this in these other buckets anymore. Mm -hmm. And I want people to understand that trans people are just people and they just trying to be who they are. And sometimes it's taken, and I would say no transition, no person who's transition is, is the same, it's unique. Mm -hmm. But there's probably the commonality that what you really are trying to find is who you are. Uh, not what you are, but really who, what's the essence of me? Mm -hmm. uh, what is my identity? And I think that that's what I want people to know is that each and every person has a right to be who they are and not be judged for it. Um, everybody can live their own life. I'm not judging this person over here for their life. And I think that if people could understand, we got to stop the judging thing. We got to stop putting people in various buckets for convenience, for our understanding uh, of who they are. And I don't think you really have to understand what trans is. I think what you need to know is that this is a person who just wants to be who they are, dress the way they want, talk the way they want, be love who they want. It's 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 a universal idea that we should have that freedom to to be who we want to be. Mm -hmm. And I want people to to take that away from this. I'm sure you had a lot of um, aha moments when um, when you were making this film, of course, as you're as you're moving forward and discovering and learning, what's one thing about yourself? What's one thing that you are walking away from this uh, from this experience with? Well, I mean, as I said before, I I just really didn't know anything about transgender people. I'm a pretty open person, so I would never like judge somebody, but now that I've actually had the experience, I think that that's something that I will personally take away is I have in my own unique way been able to, to understand transgender people better and, mm -hmm. and see uh, how Iden has come through so many things uh, in this past, well, it's probably been almost four years now, um, I feel more open. I just feel more open to different situations, different people. And I always thought I was really open. And I look back and I'm like, not so much. That maybe, mm -hmm. maybe you've, uh, you've grown. Uh, mm -hmm. I found out more about me uh, through this. So that's, that's a, a good place to be when, when, you're still growing. That's the most important thing I think people can realize is that there's no end to growing. You've got to keep doing it. It's so important to, to know that, to, <laughs> to agree to that, to give yourself permission to agree to that and mm -hmm. say, okay, you know, I'm intentionally going to keep growing. I'm intentionally going to create space for more knowledge, for more experiences. I'm going to be open. I'm going to be open to that. That's huge, huge, huge. Um, I'm curious because I don't know anything about the film process. We're almost done with this film. What once it's completed, what is the next steps for the film? Where does it go? 
whose hands does this get in and what are the hopes for that? Well, I think that, um, well, there's a lot of programming out there that's just looking, you know, they're just looking for this kind of thing. It would probably first go to film festivals and that kind of thing. I might pitch a network. Uh, I, I'm not clear in my environmental films, I know where to go. Uh, this will be another growing learning experience as to how to, to market it and uh, get it to as many people as possible. Um, I found with my last film, uh, environmental film, um, that I went out to the environmental community and uh, for fundraising. And in doing so, it turned out to be a really, I didn't even realize it, a good marketing plan because one of the ways people could, um, the, the whole model was kind of a Kickstarter model where it's incentive driven. You give me X and to help me do this film and then you get something. So in one case, it was like, I went out to environmental organizations and said, if, if you donate $500, you get a license for a screening. And I had hundreds of those around the country. And when the film came out, it was screened all over the country. It wow. was way, and in Canada. I just was talking to somebody this morning about a Canadian uh, screening. So I will do the same thing. I will go out to the LGBTQ plus community. And in doing so, word spreads. It's, it's really amazing. And of course, you know everything about social media and how to get the word out. We're setting up a website, Facebook page, finishing the trailer tonight. Um, so all those are elements to get it out there. So then you start to have people requesting, when will this be out? I have the perfect situation to show it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, and I, I, I'm hoping to have uh, probably an opening at the two of the uh, local theaters here in the area. Uh, and uh, that's one way to, to start. But definitely film festivals and, and who knows, maybe an Oscar. Who knows? Maybe an Oscar. Yes, why not? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I know that there's, a, um, you know, people out, and you mentioned it um, a little bit, and I think I, I kind of uh, touched on it. People, um, and I'll use what you said, people don't know what they don't know. And um, a lot of people just have prejudice. A lot of people have biases. A lot of people have all of these things that can be barriers to understanding and barriers, you know, to empathy. Um, and this this is a kind of an off off question to um, to someone who is going to be watching this or listening, um, who is on the uh, the who's on the side of disagreement, who's on the side of not protecting rights, who's on the side of not creating spaces, what would you tell them? Again, I think I would go back to the idea that we're all individuals and we have our own uh, needs and, and desires and identity. And there are sometimes you may not be able to reach those people. I think what this film could do is reach people who are maybe on the fence. I always see movements as starting small, but as they grow and more and more people know about it, I think that what happens is some of those people who never would think about, uh, say, an interracial couple. I see interracial couples everywhere. Um, but my sister got married in the 70s to... Uh, and that's why Iden is biracial, but to a black man. And then it was like lots of staring, all that. Now it's just accepted. And I think that this is, it may take a while. I actually, when I started the film, I thought transgender people were more accepted. And then there's just been this huge backlash. And I almost, feel, I really feel like the film could be timely because there has been such a backward movement mm -hmm. uh, which is another political thing I won't even talk about. <laughs> but it's, it's to me, the pendulum only swings. And I think it's going to swing back to people just saying, that's fine, live your life. And, mm -hmm. and I think that there will always be people who absolutely know. 
uh, mm. this is not, uh, this is bad. This is, could never be good. Uh, so we can't convince some people, but I think we could convince a, a lot of people to just try empathy and acceptance and, um, also give themselves, as you say, permission to grow. And I think that's what can happen. I think it can too. I think it can too. And I think it takes um, projects like this. I think it takes um, somebody putting things out there and us being willing to receive them. Um, I was I was speaking to somebody the other day and we were talking about a different subject, but it, it's sort of the same. It's like, you know, if I'm, a, if I'm presented with something that makes, I don't wanna say makes sense, but that is different from what I'm used to or challenges my understanding or kind of reframes it in a different way, I'm then, I can then be open to the humanity yep. of it all. You had mentioned, um, you had mentioned that this is not going from um, gender A to gender B and that it's about taking a raw and uniquely intimate journey, not from self, but to self. Yeah. I think that uh, what that's really speaking to is, again, you are an individual that is not just about your gender or your body um, or your hair color or any of that stuff. It's you're a unique person. Uh, and when you can I think there's a lot of self-discovery for somebody who's transitioning uh, and a lot of acceptance of, of who they are. Um, Aiden will never go back. Uh, Aiden will never be afraid again mm. to the degree that she was. Now there's fear and there's fear, but she's not afraid to be, be who she is. So that is, is not about gender. That's about, understanding yourself and uh, discovering yourself you're you're and and she's been through a lot of dark places uh, so she's finding healing and um, with the people she's surrounded with we're fortunate to live in a community that's very accepting that's been a plus um, she has a very accepting family uh, just all around very uh, good people all around her. And uh, I don't want to give away too much of the story, <laughs> but there, there's a good story here. And, and, and it really is uh, a story of, a, it's a journey she's been on and, and, uh, and she's now uh, also out in the art world, which she hadn't done before. She had never shared any of her art, any of her poetry. All these are things that she's managed to do through this whole self-discovery uh, that's been very um, in, enlightening for herself and, and informed herself of who she is. That's powerful. You know, that's powerful. It's powerful to, to know that a journey like this can reveal the opportunity to just breathe, <laughs> to just live, to explore your talents, you know, to explore life um, more comfortably. And I and I really, um, I really applaud you for for taking the opportunity and taking the journey because I'm sure it's not easy. These are emotional journeys because these are real people and real things and think real things are at stake. So you know. Right. And for I think, sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So so this isn't just another movie. This isn't just another story. These are real people with real lives who can make positive impact in a real way. So that's, that's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, trans people are just just need to be who they are. And and we can be who we are, too. And it's not hurting anybody else to, to be who you are. It's the way to go. Well, Catherine, thank you for um, thank you for taking this journey, being so brave to, you know, to step out there. Yeah, to be on the other side of the camera is scary. I mean, let me tell you. <laughs> I, I, I understand. I understand. Well, I'm looking forward to, um, to watching the movie um, and just everything that's coming your way because of it. I think this labor um, that you're doing now is just so, it's so important to be able to share that, share that story. 
Thank you so much. Catherine Zimmerman in the upcoming film, Iden. Um, visit thephilipshow.com for more information. I'll have that for you. And when everything rolls out, we will roll out right with it. Um, thank you so much to Catherine for, for being on the show, for being courageous. Wow. And for being vulnerable enough to walk through that journey and discover it in real time. One of the takeaways that I have is you don't know what you don't know. And that equals people. Leave yourself open to understanding that other people have journeys, other people have dreams, other people have lives, and it really doesn't have anything to do with my approval. They will live either way. Same with you. It doesn't really matter. One of the things that does matter is how am I positively impacting people around me? What can I do to make the world a better place? And am I in line with what I'm supposed to be doing? So visit thephilipshow.com. And as usual, you are the best you in the world. I will see you next time here on The Philip Show. Don't wait.